because of the very high demand and, and the shortage of resources, we are today at a higher demand. Part of that is what I call something which is new, which I call the short term attrition, you know, exacerbated a little bit by COVID and the fact that people still work a lot from home. You know, we have a lot of what I call short term attrition or infant attrition is people who come and leave within six months. It's, they behave more like subcontractors in a certain way. So it's part of our normal attrition numbers, but I would say it's more like subcontracting where it is really investing in employees for the long term and then them leaving, which is really what's important for us. So the number seems high, and yes, it is high compared to what we would like to, but it's also linked to where, where the demand is, and it's starting to come down. So we have some improvement already in Q1 compared to Q4, and we do expect to start to see some slowdown in attrition you know, during this year, but it will take a couple of years to be able to normalize to what we we'll say is being our normal uh, operating model. But understand that in this business, the normal operating model is 15 to 20 percent of attrition. OK, so Eamon, let's look, look more broadly at this at France, at Europe, at the world. There's something really badly wrong here. Let me just go through the numbers for everybody. French unemployment for youth is 20 percent. European Union uh, youth unemployment, 14 percent. Overall unemployment in the eurozone or in the EU is about 7%, 6.8, I think, is the latest figure as well. How can that be when you're struggling so much for talent? Are we training people the wrong jobs in this, uh, this continent? There is definitely need to be able to align more some of the capabilities and some of the training to where the demand is. I mean, remember, we have, for example, a huge amount of demand for around uh, artificial intelligence, around data, around cyber, around software engineering. And, and we put them through very long courses. I think we need to start looking at two to three year cycles, which are much more focused around one specific subject like software engineering, and to be able to basically train these people in two or three years and put them on the market, because we have a lot of demand. But today, we already start hiring a lot of people based on general skills, and not the fact that they have a technology background, and we train them, because there's not enough people in the market to supply some of our demand. So we have expanded quite a bit the, the hiring of people who have non-technology background and to train them from scratch to be able to, you know, uh, address some of the, the challenges that we have in terms of talent in the market today. Is EU policy, is Commission policy boosting the European tech sector enough to create more companies like yourself and protect those companies? Uh, I, I think there's a positive trend. I think the focus from the, from the EU around the technology sector is pretty high. Uh, I think the, the whole talk about, you know, the, the sovereignty and the independence around technology is really providing a lot of support in terms of some new programs uh, at the EU level to be able to strengthen the overall network of companies in that sector. And I think it will have positive effect, of, of course, in the medium term. It takes time to build these companies, take time to build talent. But we see it in France, we see it in other countries, the number of new digital platform and digital technology companies that are basically requiring a lot of the technology talent is really growing at a very fast pace. So I'm pretty positive in, around some of the decision and some of the action being done at the EU level there. 